So now that I've owned this BMW E34 525i for two years now, it's time to go ahead and lower it. Now there's a number of different ways that you can do this, different setups and stuff that you can run. Um, I'm kind of doing my own thing. I personally love the way that these cars ride just stock. They're great road trip cars and they're plenty sporty as they are. I'm not trying to make this into a sports car because it's not a sports car. They just look really good a little bit lower. And that's my goal is to retain as much of the factory ride as I can while getting that sporty look. And so what I have here are the H&R OE sport springs. These are different than all their other sport springs. These are supposed to be the most supple of the springs that they offer. Uh, and I'm also pairing those with the OEM Bilstein B4 struts and shocks. So we'll see what this really means in the long term. I think that with the lesser spring travel, it would probably be smart to pair this with a stiffer sway bar. Uh, this isn't really scientific by any means, but I'd imagine that through a turn, if you hit a bump, uh, you're, you're losing that extra bit of play that you would have. So a stiffer sway bar might be a good option to pair with OEM style spring rates and shocks. But uh, we'll see how this goes. This video will just be sort of a tutorial on either how to lower these cars or how to replace the shocks and struts. We're gonna be replacing the struts, the mounts, everything. So just stay tuned for all that and hopefully you find at least some part of this helpful. And at the end, we'll do a little before and after. So we are gonna be starting at the front here. I do already have the jack up under the front subframe, but before we jack the car up, we're gonna to wanna to just loosen our lug bolts. So we're gonna do that real quick. So these are a 17 millimeter hex on all of these. And now we can go up. One thing to note while I'm putting this in the air is if you are lowering your car, just note how much extra clearance you have with the jack so that when you put the car back down, you can actually get the jack out from under the car. Uh, you might need to lower the car onto boards. All right, and once we've lowered onto some jack stands, we can go ahead and spin these lug bolts right off. So our next order of operations is to remove the brake caliper so that we can free all of this up from the strut assembly. I'm just going to start first of all by unplugging our brake wear sensor just so that we do not risk breaking that later on. So that just pulls straight out. And then over here, all these little rubber grommets just need to pull out from the strut assembly. A little bit of silicone spray or WD-40 or something will, will help these work out. So there's the wire for our brake wear sensor. This is the wire to our wheel speed sensor that we'll also have to remove. And we're also going to pop out brake line from this grommet here while we're at it. And there we go. And then next we're gonna re remove this little clip here. Uh, I always forget how to pull these off properly. So we're gonna find out real quick. Oh, okay, so pry like that and they come right out. So next up, uh, we're gonna remove the two bolts that hold the caliper and bracket on. Uh, coming around the back, you can see this bolt right here, and there's one down bottom right here that I'm touching. So we'll get those two off real quick. So these bolts are gonna be 19 millimeter. And we're gonna use a breaker bar on them. There we go. Another option, uh, if you don't want to take the whole bracket and everything off, is you can take these two caps off and you can remove the slide pins so that you can remove just the caliper rather than the bracket and the caliper. Uh, this is just the way that I'm doing it. Alright, so the brake caliper is now loose. I'm going to go get a bucket or something to set it on top of so that we don't stress the brake line while we're working on the rest of everything. And uh, then we're done with that. So next thing, uh, we are once again on the back side of the brake rotor and everything. Uh, up here is our bracket where we just removed our brake caliper. So this is the front of the car up here and this is the back of the car back here. And what we're looking at is the wheel speed sensor right here. And this is a little five millimeter Allen. So I already popped it loose so it's just finger tight. So I'll just spin that out real quick. And then this should just wiggle out of here. And there we go. There's our wheel speed sensor out. We can just let that hang. 
So one last thing we have to remove is the upper nut that holds the top end of our sway bar end link. And this is a 17 millimeter. Uh, we'll need to get another wrench to hold the shaft of the sway bar end link. And I'll let you know what size that is in just a moment. So the shaft appears to be a 16 or 17 millimeter, um, but I opted to just use an adjustable wrench. So now that we have everything pulled away from the strut assembly, all that's left to do is detach the hub assembly from the strut assembly itself. So I've kind of been referring to this the wrong way. The hub itself is actually going to come out with the strut. Uh, we're actually detaching the hub and strut assembly from all our control arms here. And to do that, it's just three little bolts at the bottom of our strut assembly all right here. So one, two, three and that will remove it. And these are also 19 millimeter and should be a fair bit of torque. So that's the first one, get the one up in here. You're gonna want a pretty good breaker bar for this. And the last one here, I'm not really able to get a straight shot onto. I'm gonna see if I can turn the steering wheel a little bit to get me to it. which that looks like it did the trick. There we go. There we go, this should be separated. So the very last thing we need to do is take these three top nuts out and then our strut assembly is no longer attached to the car. Uh, you don't really have to worry about it just falling out. It should be pretty well supported as it is, but do just be wary of it while you're doing this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull all of this out. There we go. So when your strut is stuck to this block that all of your lower control arms mount up to, uh, you stick your pry bar right in there and wiggle and this will all come apart and there we go. Just gotta give it a yank and there we go. So now with the strut assembly out of the car, uh, we're gonna turn our attention to getting the strut cartridge out of the assembly. Uh, the strut cartridge is the strut itself which we're replacing. Uh, this nut on the end that we have to remove is a 22 millimeter. All right, so we've got our spring compressors on here and we're gonna go ahead and drive off this 22 millimeter nut with our impact gun. There we go. So now with the spring removed, uh, we need to take this retaining nut off of here, which we are going to need a pipe wrench. go. <laughs> need two pipe wrenches. That's ridiculous. There we go. Now, that's what we need to replace. And it's a good thing we are, because that is awfully oily. So, now we'll take our new cartridge and we'll load it up. Thankfully this comes with a new nut, so with actual like flanges on it that you can grab. So that's a step in the right direction. I'd say that's plenty tight. So next up we're gonna go ahead and assemble our bump stop and bellows. These will ensure the longevity of our new shock absorbers. So this goes up in there, like so. Then we'll slip this little cover back on here. And then from my understanding, the bump stop itself goes up towards the top. And our new spring should be short enough to where we don't need a spring compressor to get this back together. Get that washer on there. Get this mounted here, and this washer will go up here. Our new strut mount goes there. This little washer will go in here, and then we should be able to at least get our nut started. 
And so this new nut is not a 22 like the old one. Our new nut is a 19, so that's good to know. And we'll go ahead and hit this briefly with our impact gun, and that should have us set. And our reinstallation is as simple as doing our removal, but in reverse. So we'll just go ahead and knock that out. So I've got this strut assembly back into place. Uh, I figure at this point I'll go ahead and pause and we'll talk about all the torque specs real quick. So these three upper nuts here all torque to 16 foot-pounds. Uh, this nut in the center torques to 48. And the three lower bolts that mount up under here all torque to 78 foot-pounds. And then the two bolts for our brake caliper bracket torque to 81 foot-pounds. So everything is now fully reassembled on this side of the car. I'm gonna go ahead and do everything that we did here on the other side and I'll meet you again when we're ready to take care of the rear. So the front's all done, it's back on the ground now, but before I show you that, we're gonna go ahead and take care of the rear, which we are around back now. And I also decided to put this thing back on stock wheels and I'm doing that for a before and after, just so you can see what it looks like with the stock diameter wheels and tires on it in comparison to how it looked before. Uh, but anyway, before we get dirty, screwing around out here, uh, we're actually gonna go inside the car to take care of our first couple of steps. We actually need to pull the rear seat out and the rear deck lid out to be able to get to the top bolts on the rear shocks. But other than that, this should be pretty straightforward. It's a lot easier to handle than the front struts, so it should go relatively smoothly. So let's jump in. So inside the car here, the very first step to removing this rear seat is actually literally just to yank up the seat bottom here. So let's start on this side, show you what that looks like. There you go. So that one's up. Uh, there's a clip on each side. There we go. That's both of them out. And this just slides right on out. And so now to remove the seat back itself, we're going to start by lowering our armrest. Um, we're going to peel this Velcro up here, and we should get access to two 10 millimeter bolts down here at the bottom. And we're going to take those both out. All right, and now with both of those out, we go over to these little tabs here. There's one on each side. There's one there as well. Uh, and these also have two plastic nuts on them. They are 10 millimeter, and those are the last two pieces of hardware that need to come out. All right, and now with both of those out, uh, we're gonna come up here and we need to pop these off. These are already kind of popped off on mine. Uh, be careful with these, they are very fragile, and, but they do just kind of pop straight up like that. And once those are loose, we can kind of just Run them down here, keep them out of the way. And at this point, there are two more little clips up in here and here, similar to what we had down here with the seat bottom, where you'll just have to kind of lift the seat back up and out and unclip them from the car itself. And then you should be able to lean this out of the way. There we go. And voila, and we'll just lean this forward and that'll be out of our way. So now that we got the seat out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and remove this rear deck lid here. And all we need to do to remove it is remove these little clips. There should be four of them, I believe, along here. We'll go ahead and knock that out real quick. And now we can go ahead and pull this out of here. So now with the deck lid out of the way, uh, we can peel this up and see up under here that this is the top mount of our rear shock. These are the three 13 millimeter nuts we'll be taking off. We're not gonna do that right now. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and get the car in the air and do everything that we need to do up under here. And then we'll come back to this. So we're ready to go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna pop this wheel off and uh, we'll jump in. All right, so with that wheel off, all we need to do under here is break this bolt loose here. This is a 22 millimeter bolt that holds the lower end of our shock absorber. And you're gonna want a breaker bar to do that. Uh, and that's it under here. So we'll go ahead and get that done. And we can go ahead and take this bolt all the way out because it's not actually what's supporting the shock right now. We'll see that in just a moment. So that bolt's out. Then climbing back into the car here, uh, we're going back to these upper shock 
mount nuts. These are all 13 millimeters and we're just going to back those out all the way. You don't really have to worry about it dropping at all. Just remove everything all the way out and then we'll jump around back down bottom. So now back around bottom here, all we need to do uh, to get the shock out is go ahead and push that way and it should come right down like so. So we'll go ahead and get our spring compressors on here on our old spring. Now I'm going to go ahead and spin this top nut off. It's a 17 millimeter and you might have to hold the shaft while you're doing this. Uh, obviously with something that won't mar it if you plan to reuse your shocks. Um, because I do plan to reuse these, these only have like 15,000 miles on them. But anyway, now with that out, we can take our upper mount and make sure that we don't lose the rubber. We should be able to get the spring and everything off of there. I will be reusing this bump stop and bellows. Uh, you also want to get the rubber off the bottom. And this little guy, I'll just put everything back in. So it's situated and we'll take our bump stop as well. Uh, these bellows are worn out. Um, I should probably replace these, but I think that they're only compressed because that's where they ride naturally anyway. So they're kind of doing their job regardless, even if they are a little crushed like this. But I'll go ahead and feed that back on there. And now for the main event, I'll go ahead and slide our new spring on here and we can take our mount. Uh, you can replace these if you want. Mine still look just fine. So they are going right back in. Uh, but they don't get quite the same uh, amount of beating that the, the fronts do. Get this washer back up top here. The nice thing about the lowering springs is we don't need to compress them uh, to reassemble this. So that's nice at least. We'll go ahead and hold this with these grips again and I'll snug this down. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this to spec. These three mounting nuts up at the top all torque to 17 foot pounds. And then most importantly, this bolt down bottom torques to 94 foot pounds. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get this all back into the car and assembled and do the other side. And then I'll come back to you with everything done. We'll look at the car. We'll do a little bit of comparison before and after, and we'll go over some conclusions. It's not super low, uh, I recognize that, uh, but that's not really what I was shooting for anyway. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flash some before and after pictures while we're rolling here, uh, so you can look at those, and then some just after pictures for the fun of it. But my goal was really to get as close to E39 sport suspension as I could, uh, and I think aesthetically, nailed it. Uh, the, the, the wheels and tires fit perfectly within the wheel housing. It looks a lot, it, it sits a lot like my 540M Sport. Um, and that's that's what I was looking for so aesthetically on point, but as far as ride goes It's in the right vein, but it's not quite there. Uh, let me explain what I mean So the springs are definitely they're they're firmer than I was expecting. Uh, they were described as uh, uh, Retaining the OEM ride quality. That's very much not the case And I think part of that is the the shocks that I'm using I'm using the OE struts and shocks and that's mostly because because I bought those before I even considered buying lowering springs. Uh, so that's how I ended up with those. But the result of that is firmer springs with the stock amount of dampening, uh, it, it, it makes the ride a lot harsher. Uh, the, the bumps are a lot punchier. It's a lot quicker of a, of, of a motion when you hit a bump. And I think the easiest way to fix that would just to be to buy some gas-filled sports struts uh, those should add enough damping to where it would probably ride just like an M Sport uh, E39 or just Sport Package in general. Handling wise, it is very planted through corners now. It definitely does not waft around uh, like it used to and I guess in that sense it's sort of achieving that E39 Sport suspension uh, uh, goal there as well. Um, so that's good. It's 
but again, the ride quality kind of ties into the handling there to where it, it can start to feel a little bit unsettled around corners when you when it's you know on a bumpier back road uh, just because there's not enough damping to help absorb uh, those larger bumps. But as for right now, honestly, I'm very happy with it. I was more just going for the look right now than anything else. I've never modified suspension. I've never modified anything on a car. Uh, so this was a good, I guess, first project uh, in that regard. It's gonna take some experimenting and, and some changes down the line. And you know, I'm very picky. Uh, I had passengers in the car to get their impression of the ride. If I hadn't said anything, they probably wouldn't have even known. It's, it's very inoffensive. The, 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 the added stiffness and harshness is minimal to almost negligible. Uh, I can only really tell because I've put like 20,000 miles on this car now. Um, so I'm very, I'm very cued into what it's supposed to feel like. And I very much like the way that it rode originally. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. I just wanted to get rid of that monster truck suspension. And the ride height only dropped maybe an inch, inch and a half in the front and three quarters of an inch to an inch in the rear. Uh, so not much difference in height. I think that this thing, I think the springs were sagging already anyway. This car is 230,000 miles on it now. Uh, I'll, I'll show some pictures of the other E34 that I had. Uh, that one seemed to sit a lot higher than this one did uh, on the stock springs. And that might just be because of the wear and tear that both vehicles each experienced in their lifetime. This one might have just ended up sagging more. Uh, so bear that in mind. Uh, your, the difference in your ride height might be more significant. So uh, that's my thoughts on aesthetics, ride quality, and handling improvements. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's still a, a comfortable, daily drivable car, and uh, it looks it looks great as far as I'm concerned. I think the ride height is, is perfectly on point. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna catch some more of my content later on, feel free to subscribe. Uh, we just past a thousand subscribers, which I think is awesome that, that we were able to do that within a year, less than a year. Uh, that's really cool. And um, you know, I'm hoping to keep growing. So there's definitely a lot more content to come later down the line and uh, I'd be happy to have you along for that. But until then, I'll catch you in the next video.